went to camp, I had a feeling that God wasn't going to touch me at all. He ended up touching me. And this year, he ended up doing more because I just got baptized about almost two months ago. <laughs> so I didn't know if God was going to do anything, if he was going to show me anything. And I have problems talking to people. I'm very nervous. That's why I dance, so I don't have to <laughs> tell anyone how I feel. Um, so <laughs> I was hoping that he was going to help me express my love for him, and he did, and I was Wednesday night, Wednesday or Thursday, Pastor Matt was talking about a girl who didn't know how to express herself and couldn't, so she handed up posters to help invite people to what was going on in her U-turn, or her youth group. So I decided to do that, and I made a huge group chat with all my friends from my athletic stuff, my sports and everything, and I invited them to just a huge Bible group at my house, and that's going to be hosted like two weeks from now. So hopefully that gets out the word that I want to express and help them come here also to help. Not him. Not him. Give it up, Not him. My name is Ethan, and Kings. Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, uh, I did not want to go at all. Um, my parents were actually forcing me to go. Uh, so, yeah, I, I said I'd rather just be home, play video games, and hang out with friends and all that. I mean, I did not want to go. But um, when I got to camp, the first night, Josh was saying how the first night seemed to be the worst. I disagree with that. The first night was amazing. Like, all the nights were amazing. Like, right when I got there, all the people that I met, they were just so awesome, and the environment is just crazy. Like, you'll meet like tons of people that I didn't know. Like, you'll have like tons of different personalities from different people. It's just crazy, and the games, oh my word! Like, it's crazy. Like, uh, there's a uh, kickball on ice. That's probably like a fan favorite from all of us. It's like this, this, this giant tarp, and it's like filled with water and uh, soap and all that. It's like kickball, on ice. so everyone's like sliding over and all that stuff. But yeah, that's great. Yeah, that was awesome. yeah, but yeah, that was great. And uh, like I said, the people there are amazing. Like I met like thirty plus people, like close friends, and then all the friends that I had at youth group that when I became personal and more uh, uh, open and uh, more uh, close to. Uh, so that was really cool. And probably the second night there, they were talking about a let it go sermon. Uh, the pastor was talking about Let It Go sermon, and when I got to when I got to camp and I was listening to the sermons, I realized how far I've strayed from God and everything. Like I haven't done the greatest stuff lately. And uh, during the Let It Go sermon, I've had a grudge against someone for a while now, and I've been like angry at a certain person. And uh, he was the pastor was talking about how let it, let it go, like let go of your past, let go of people that you have grudges against, and all that. And during that sermon, I saw a person there at the camp that reminded me of this person, like they looked identical. <laughs> so I kind of got, I kind of started breaking down, like I started crying and all that stuff because I've been mad at this person for months and months. And uh, I went up to one of my friends from camp, uh, and we were talking, and you we were explaining our both our problems, and I just got really personal, and uh, I think that was really great. I think God really uh, did a lot of stuff in my life, and. Then the final sermon was uh, Never Go Back. It was called Never Go Back. And it was basically saying, uh, uh, Never Go Back. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, just keep focusing on God and uh, keep reading the Bible and going to church. And God told me to uh, preach the gospel, kind of, like try to get my friends to go to church and go to youth group. And so, yeah, I think I can work on that a little bit. But yeah, it's. Any of you guys uh, don't want to go to camp, trust me, you want to go to camp. Yeah. Yeah. Any takers? <laughs> Shane. <laughs> so, uh, as Josh said, my name is Shane, and for me, <laughs> this was both, this was my first year going to camp, and it's also my last year as a student. But this really gave me a new perspective on what I expected camp would be like. Like, I mainly 
just thought that it would be fun and games with good services, but this that last week just blew that completely out of the water. Everything was amazing, and like while the games were super fun, for me the services were the best part because you could, I just felt the presence of God moving through not just me but through everybody. And for me, after the first night, uh, in which he talked about, uh, what was it? How much. How much, thank you. Well, I blanked on that and I had it in my head a minute ago. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he talked about how much. And I could just tell right then that there were, a, that, that we, everyone was going to change in some way. And this definitely worked with me, because both the how much and the let it go referred a lot to my past because coming up in, uh, in just a few weeks, one week, and a couple, a couple years ago, one week after my 16th birthday, my dad just walked out on us and that created a lot of hurt in me. And there was an event that happened just a couple weeks ago, weeks before that, that it also hurt me. And so that was a time in my life and up until this past week at camp, when I let it go, that I had walls built up around my heart where I could not really trust anybody. I would always put on this facade that like, I was this good person and that everyone, that I just loved everyone, but that wasn't true. I had that wall up around, the wall up around my heart. And in the let it go sermon, I, admit, I broke down because those walls were broken. And the last night also hit me really hard. Never go back. And really, with the mixture of let it go and never go back, I'm definitely not the same person I was last week. And, and I made a vow that I would never go back to that person that I was. Griffin? No. I'm Griffin. <laughs> Um, so my name is Griffin. Um, to tell you how God works in my life at camp this week. Um, earlier in my life, probably started around fifth or sixth grade, I cared a lot about respect and what other people thought of me. I remember Chris was talking earlier, and my peers, peer pressure, um, stuff like that. And God isn't really isn't wasn't really popular with my group of friends. So I would kinda put him in a corner and just be like, Yeah, I don't need to I'm not gonna bring that up. Actually when people would bring it up I would usually shy away from it, which is really really a bad thing. But um, so I started seventh grade, I said, you know what, I'm gonna not worry about respect. Not worry about that also seventh grade, I was gonna I was gonna chop away at what, I, what other people thought of me. So seventh grade, I uh, got rid of all my bad music. Eighth grade, I tried to work specifically on swearing, not swearing, um, and I just tried to chop away at it. And um, I don't think I fully really got past the fact that um, I really needed to be more outspoken about my faith. And I went to camp and I said, you know what God, I'm just gonna be quiet and I'm just going to be still and I'm going to let you work in my life. Because so much, so many times I'm just like, God, do this, God, do this. When I pray, I'm like, God, please do this, God, please do this. Instead of just kind of just sitting and waiting, praising Him. So uh, I decided to do that. And I think it was the second night one of the leaders came up to me. It was during the altar call. And one of the leaders came up to me. And she said, I just want you to know that I can see you with your group of friends sharing the gospel to them. And I was like, wow. And then two nights later, Thursday night, another altar call. Um, Josh was praying with me. And the cool thing about this is when he was praying, um, he didn't just say, I know you're going to lead your friends to Christ. He said specifically, this is how I know how unique this is. He says, specifically, I feel that you're going to lead more than two people to Christ of your friends. So camp has really been, I feel like God has like challenged me. Like, no, I'm not excited for school, but I'm like, all right. I'm like looking forward to actually like 
being outspoken about, uh, about my faith and like talking to my friends because I really want to do that now. So it was an encouragement. Camp was awesome. You guys need to go. <laughs>
don't know what's in my throat. Um, I don't have any money. Um, so, it, you will, the message is there, they get, I don't know how long he spends uh, practicing these sermons, but when he does say them, they definitely get through to you, and uh, I know they've changed me, because I'm, I'm definitely very different than from before I went to camp, and I can bet that you'll, if you go to camp, which you definitely should next year, um, and watch me eat another paintball, uh, you will definitely be changed. It's not toxic. Um, So our final two. Go to Obi. Go to Obi. Go to Obi. Best of luck. Best of luck. Rock, paper, scissors. I just won. Helen! Go to Obi. Go to Obi. My name's Obi. Go to Obi. So, well, I only have five minutes, so I gotta make this fast. Let's start this talk fast, but. Well, I want to say that God really did do a lot in my life at camp. I can honestly see that, like, I found my career path just by asking Him myself. Like, if you ask Him for anything, He's going to answer you back. There was points where, there was the first sermon, and it was called How Much. And it's a story of uh, Hosea and Gomar, which is, it's a pretty weird story, so you got to look it up first in the Bible, because it's about, uh, prostitution and such. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, you want to read that. But, anyways, like, when Pastor Matt was preaching how much, I don't know, it's kind of hard for you guys to understand it from this perspective, but he was saying that how much as in, like, God is crying out for our sins and how much he wants to pay for them to let us free. So it, it really hit me hard because I've had these personal addictions of mine that I've had to get rid of, and they've been hurting me for years. So, I just, I just walked up to Pastor Josh and asked for prayer, and that's where I honestly felt like I was saved by Christ. So, and there's other situations, like, I'm going to change this around to say something funny, but if you've ever had a cabin that smells so much like axe, it is terrible. There is about 12 axe bombs flying off in our cabin. Three of them were from counselors that were shooting them off, too. Anyways, it's not really good. Yeah. 